Scottish wildcat. Yes, Mike Dilger went to the Scottish Highlands to meet the superheroes trying to save the day. The UK is home to one of the rarest cats in the world. A fearsome feline with a striking coat and bushy tail right on the brink of extinction. And without urgent action, it's likely that in my lifetime we'll lose the last of the UK's great land predators, the Scottish wildcat. It's thought that just 35 pure wildcats may remain in the whole of Scotland, forced into just a handful of possible locations, including this one, the Ardna Merkham Peninsula. Dr Paul O'Donoghue is determined to save this iconic animal, and he's starting here because this area is mostly surrounded by water offering the best opportunity to isolate and so protect one of the last remaining wildcat populations from a very real threat. Morning Paul. Morning Mike. I thought I was coming to Scotland to look for Scottish wildcats and here I am in a village hall in the middle of nowhere. Uh, what's going on? You're absolutely right. This is, this is where real Scottish wildcat conservation happens. This is our neutering clinic. So we've converted a village hall into a vet centre. The Scottish wildcat's biggest threat comes from domestic cats turned feral. Because they're closely related, they're able to reproduce. But when this happens, it dilutes the genetics of the pure wildcat, creating hybrids. So Paul is working with the local community to neuter as many cats as possible, including this one here, to try to remove the threat of hybridization. What about the cats that are living out in the countryside? Yes, there is a population of cats here, and we're going to go and set some traps to hopefully catch them. OK, let's go. Cheers, guys. Cheers. To create a place where true wildcats can thrive, Paul must catch, assess, and if necessary, neuter every feral cat and hybrid on the peninsula. Hybrids that look wild can now be tested using a special DNA test, ensuring any true wildcat cord is released unneutered. Traps are placed throughout the woodland. Once concealed, a trail of bait is placed around the trap to entice the cats inside. So does that mean we're, um, we're completely set? Come back tomorrow morning. First thing in the morning, hopefully we've got a walker. Perfect, let's go. Along with the physical traps, camera traps also monitor the area to help assess the cat population. Paul is confident there are wild cats here, as tantalising glimpses have shown cats with very distinctive markings. Let's hope our trap works, and any cat nearby is hungry for our bait. So Paul, the morning after the night before, your team has been out and about checking traps. What news? Exciting news today. We've got something in the trap just up here. I'm not sure what it is yet, but let's go and check it out. OK, Mike, here it is. Where? Right here. Wow. Paul, we've got a cat. It looks at the domesticated end rather than a Scottish wildcat, but you're after everything, aren't you, really? Particularly these. This is mission accomplished. Every cat we catch is important, whether it's a feral cat, hybrid, or wildcat. So we need to get this cat off the hill as quickly as possible to our vet clinic. Good to go. This black cat is obviously feral and will be neutered in the clinic before being released back into the wild. This one cat alone could produce 180 kittens in its lifetime. So controlling the feral cat population is an uphill struggle. Paul set himself an ambitious task. Yet he believes it's not only achievable, but also vital if the Scottish wildcat is to have a future on this peninsula. And Mike joins us now.